Hey guys, Two Legit City here, and today we're gonna be going over shovels. Shovels are actually, in my opinion, the best food source in the game. And today we're gonna go over how you can sustain yourself with shovels, what you're going to need, and how to properly take care of these guys without getting a headache. Now, of course, shovels, if you guys don't know, are a critter that could burrow in the ground. If you guys remember playing it in the vanilla game, you're going to have them in space where your regolith is, by the space vacuum. And of course, if you're playing with the DLC, you only get shovels up top if you're using the classic start. The spaced out start gives you the smaller asteroid where the shovels do not appear. I believe that if you guys don't get it up top, you have to go to the regolith asteroid in order to get shovels, but I'm not 100% sure. However, these little guys are great sources of food. Now, with the burrowing mechanic, it becomes a nightmare because they move really fast. Faster than a duplicate with max athleticism. And it's almost impossible to catch these guys once they start burrowing. The only way you'll be able to catch these guys is if you trick them to run over to you by dropping food on the ground. Luckily, these guys are gluttons and will easily go over 100,000 kcals if you so choose to feed them. Now, of course, we're wild uh, farming, and I'm going to say wild in quotes because they are all tame shovels. But before we get into the food, there's going to be how do you contain the shovels. For the most part, the shovels are able to dig through anything with a hardness value of under 150. So anything under 150 hardness, they're going to be able to dig through. Now, what is hardness? On the information tab, when you click on a natural tile, I clicked on granite. You could see right here, there's a hardness value associated with that tile. All natural tiles have this value but your regular tiles will not. And that's gonna be because you're gonna be taking the hardness of your element. In our case, it's sandstone for this tile. Now, you need to get things at 150 hardness or higher to prevent these shovels from digging into the tiles. The first material that has a hardness value over 150 is the Abyssalite. As you can see right here, hardness value 150, nearly impenetrable. That's actually why you have a layer of Abyssalite at the top of your map. The second thing is going to be Obsidian. Obsidian has a hardness value of 200 and is also not able to be dug through by the shovels. The next thing to consider is diamond. Diamond tiles have a hardness value of 250, and you guys could actually build window tiles out of diamond to prevent the shovels from digging through. The abyssal light doesn't really have use in the tiles, so you're really just left with obsidian and diamond. Now there's one more category of things that the shovels cannot dig through, and that category is going to be anything that's a refined metal over here on the metal tiles all of the materials for this is a refined metal and anything that is refined has a hardness value over 150 do not confuse this with the metal ore which is what you would need for something like the airflow or mesh tiles as those are metal ores unless you are using steel specifically you need the refined metal in order to trap the shovels. Now you can see right here, this is our shovel box. The last caveat that we use is the pneumatic door. The tooltip actually says wild critters cannot pass through doors. So there is an actually a coded element to the doors where critters just straight up cannot go past. Now this design on the right, if you were to replace these two tiles with a pneumatic door is how you would capture the shovels early game as they are not able to dig through the doors you can see right here that my tiles are made out of sandstone and the shovels can dig through if they so choose to over here we have obsidian for all of these tiles right here which means that we do not have to use the door trick to surround all the shovels instead the top layer and the bottom layer 
is all obsidian tiles. Doing that makes the ranching of the shovels look a lot better and not look as weird as having a room surrounded by doors. Now the shovels. Why are they the best food source in the game? How come they're all tame but starving? There is a lot of questions. But here are the answers. Each shovel, when they die, they produce 16,000 kcal worth of meat per shovel. Now, that's actually a lot of meat. If you were to cook that on the electric grill, that turns out to be 20,000 calories of barbecue. That could easily feed a full colony of 20 duplicates that day, the moment that shovel dies. Now, of course, that's only if the shovel dies. What happens in the meantime? How does this work? And how is this really providing that much food if we're not feeding the shovels? What's crazy is that the math actually checks out that when a shovel is born and spawns as a shovel pup from the egg, they spawn with a fixed amount of calories. That's always going to happen. This does not vary, this is a fixed number, and that value is around 50,000 kcals. I believe it's actually around 55,000, but that's beyond the point. Now, when your shovels are above zero kcals, they're gonna be not starving, and that starving debuff makes it so that you don't reproduce as well, and it knocks down your happiness by a lot. So, if you were to actually keep the shovels happy, the happiness of the shovels are going to increase the reproduction rate up from 2% to 17%. That checks out that since you get 17% per cycle, that means in 7 cycles you're going to get an egg. That egg is all you need because that egg is going to replace the tame shovel when he starves. Now after that happens, they will die by the age of 15. At age 15, the shovel will start starving in which it will count down 10 cycles and then it will immediately die. That early death actually helps us out as it is a easy way for the natural occurrence of meat to spawn. And we don't want that to all happen at once. So it's nice to spread out the deaths of the shovels. You could easily kill one starving one a little bit faster so that you could get the meat a little bit faster. But the idea is they provide an egg to replace their own life cycle. Now, with that and the fact that the eggs take 20 cycles to go through a full incubation period, that means that in 45 cycles, you have a new shovel that's about to start starving again. The math checks out that two shovels that are not on the same egg cycle, meaning it can't be the one shovel that's starving and the egg it laid. It has to be two starving shovels and two eggs they laid. That's the two separate shovels. Is enough to keep a dupe happy with eight morale food with barbecue and it's gonna last indefinitely. So two shovels per duplicate will keep every duplicate happy. Now the caveat with this is that because they provide so much food, you need to have actual pr food preservation where you have zero rot. That makes it so that if you have a lot of shovels dying at the same time, you don't get a bunch of rotted meat X amount of days from now. That just makes it so that you could stack up the calorie like we have. As you could see, we're at 5.3 million kcals of barbecue, all from these little shovels. But that's the best food source in the game in my opinion, the shovels. One extra caveat is that you always have to have the shovels be groomed. If you do not groom your shovel, they're going to be unhappy and they are not going to get that extra reproduction bonus. So that means your grooming stations should be the only ranching building that's at priority nine. Everything else like a critter drop off or a shearing station should be lower priority so that all the shovels always get brushed. Outside of that, that's all you need to do to maintain the shovels. You do not actually feed them. And if you do decide to feed them, 
I would recommend feeding them one at a time if you want to increase your egg count. But that is the shovel design. If you guys have any questions about the shovels, anything about the design, questions or concerns, leave a comment down below. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.